Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today we're going to talk about neutrinos. Yes, you might have heard about Ice Cube and the neutrinos with attitude coming straight out of Compton scattering. No, never mind. Enough of that. Uh, yeah, there has been some really cool news. There's been a couple of interesting articles. And, and the truth is, you know, neutrinos are one of those hard parts of fundamental physics that, uh, you know, because they're so hard to study and because the properties haven't been particularly well determined, particle physicists are really interested in whether there's new physics lurking in the study of neutrinos. So the neutrinos were originally suggested in 1930 by Wolfgang Pauli. They, he was looking for a way to make beta decay, where you know a neutron shoots out a, an electron and a proton and somehow has to conserve momentum. So he came up with an invisible particle that could travel through thousands and thousands of miles of solid material and not be stopped because it didn't have a charge. It only had a weak charge as in a weak nuclear force number. Look, okay, it's kind of interesting because that's very similar to the situation where dark matter and dark energy are in right now. Something that was suggested that fit all the theories and explained many things but wasn't directly detected for decades after it got incorporated into the, the math. The name incidentally comes from Enrico Fermi, who's Italian, so neutrino was like small neutron neutral particle. Anyway, yeah. Ice Cube, let's talk about it. Ice Cube is the biggest neutrino observatory in the world, and it's exactly at the South Pole. Now, they've got basically, you know, two miles of solid ice, and what they did was they drilled holes down. I mean, they didn't drill, they actually used hot water to melt the ice. And they would have these holes about two and a half kilometers deep, and towards the bottom, they would have one kilometre worth of sensors dropped down on strings, or, well, cables, obviously. These sensors, there would be about 60 of them. They're like spheres that contain photomultiplier tubes. And when they see light, they send signals up the cable. At the top, there's also some sensors to detect cosmic rays events. But importantly, there's about one and a half kilometres of just solid ice with nothing, no sensors there. The idea is that you want to block out as much light as possible, you want to block out as much background events as possible. In fact, the best quality neutrino observations come when the neutrino comes from the other side of the planet and travels through thousands of miles of rock and then hits the detector. Of course, the majority of neutrinos actually fly straight through the detector and never stop, but those ones that get stopped, yet yeah, they provide all sorts of information because the neutrino collides with a lepton, which is an electron typically, and that basically puts all the energy, imparts all the energy into the electron, which then is going very, very fast, faster than the speed of light inside the block of ice, because, you know, having the ice there lowers the speed of light. So it shoots out huge amounts of Chernyankov radiation, it creates cascades of other particles, and all these photomultipliers try to detect these events, and because of the timing, the, the very you know, high quality timing they can measure for the, the events, they can actually figure out the direction these things come from. Now, a lot of the events are actually just you know cosmic rays that come through, create a shower up top, and that's why they have the sensor at the top so they can correlate these nearby cosmic ray events as opposed to the ones that come straight through. So anyway, yeah, this thing has like 86 columns of these that are you know, almost two miles long, 2.5 kilometers. And um, yeah, biggest neutrino telescope in the world. And in September 22nd last year, they detected a single very high energy neutrino event. And they tracked the direction back and it pointed at a source somewhere to the west of Orion. So they sent out an alert. This is the high energy, um, essentially it's a, a network for high energy events. Anybody that's interested can follow these and they can then point your telescope in roughly the right direction. So within a few hours, the Fermi Gamma Ray Observatory got to pointing in that direction and they found that a known source, TX0506 plus 056, was currently flaring. Now this source is a pretty cool object. It's called a blazar. It's basically a galaxy with a black hole in the middle and the black hole is very energetic. It's scooping up material and as it falls in on the accretion disk, some of the material escapes out through the poles in jets. And these jets, when they're pointed in the right direction, are very, very bright. So this blazar 
points its jet exactly at us. That's why it's called a blazar, because it's so much brighter than everything else, because the jet is pointed in the correct direction. So yeah, as you know, you've got this very hot disk with material falling in, and I'm guessing what happens is sometimes magnetic fields get twisted up inside this rapidly rotating object, and uh, energy builds up, and sometimes it will just flare, and all this energy goes out, and it piles into the jet, and through, uh, well, you know, Compton scattering is basically where photons hit uh, part, you know, charged particles and scatter them. And, you know, you can get cascades of particles produced and accelerated, and presumably you can get some very, very high energy neutrinos out of this. So one of those events generated a storm of neutrinos, but one of those made it to the Earth and got hit by or got into the detector, was detected and then allowed us to turn around and see that there was a source in roughly the right place to account for this. Now, IceCube has previously seen neutrinos from this direction, but um, you know this is actually the first time in a long time that we've actually seen any extraterrestrial neutrinos. I, I should have probably mentioned this earlier, that uh, yeah, the first neutrinos were detected from reactors and then later they detected neutrinos from the sun. And for a long time there was something called the solar neutrino problem, where the number of neutrinos being detected were about one-third what we expected. And this was a big problem. So uh, it turns out that it was later determined that um, neutrinos... Well, we knew that neutrinos had three states, but we thought they were massless. And it turns out that they're not massless. And because they're not massless, as they travel through space, they can change their state. So they would change between being electron, muon, or tau neutrinos. And early on, we were only counting electron neutrinos because we expected that to come out of the fusion reactions in the middle of the sun. So yeah, that was the second source of neutrinos. And in 1987, there was a supernova. And that supernova detected a total or produced a total of 13 neutro neutrino detections all over the world. And since then, there have been no known e extraterrestrial neutrinos detected where we know the source. It's been really interesting because we've been seeing these high energy events, really high energy events. We're talking, you know, peta electron volts or even higher. And, you know, we see this constant background no one was able to come up with a source. So this is the first time we've actually seen an extra galactic source for a neutrino and we've identified it. So that's just, you know, mind blowing. I, I love, you know, obviously these observatories, these things are, are fascinating. The other story that's kind of floating around is a supposed, uh, supposed evidence for sterile neutrinos. So sterile neutrinos, are kind of complicated, but remember how I talked about how neutrinos oscillate? Well, um, it turns, well, there's a theory that they can oscillate into a sterile state where they essentially have their uh, helicity or their spin pointed in the wrong direction so that they can't interact with anything. And if this is true, there should be some evidence of missing neutrinos. Um, so yeah, there's the Mini Boon experiment, and the there was another experiment uh, at Los Alamos. The wait a second, the liquid scintillator neutrino detector. So one team combined all this data. They claim that they're seeing, uh, you know, a discrepancy with the number of neutrinos they expect, and so based on that, they say this could be evidence for sterile neutrinos. However, other groups are saying, well, you can't actually combine the data in the way you did it. We are not 100% sure, but, you know, let's continue to research it. So, sterile neutrinos are not proven by any means, but yes, extragalactic neutrinos seen and traced back to source. Victory for science. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.